been months since we introduced you to the Druid in Path of Exile 2, but one of the things that we're really focusing on now is how very up, each of the classes feels to play. The monk darts around quickly from enemy to enemy, building and unleashing combos. If he doesn't stay in combat, he loses momentum and has to build it up again. Rude. The warrior, on the other hand, is like a slow but unstoppable freight train. A warrior commits to big attacks and relies on stunning his enemies to stay safe in the thick of combat. When an opening presents itself, a warrior can use even larger attacks to demolish his enemies. Welcome back. Thank you so much. The Huntress seamlessly moves from melee to ranged combat and back. The true damage potential of the Huntress is only unlocked when you learn to combine ranged and melee abilities together. Kind of cool. And then there are the Spellcasters. The Sorceress is a pure caster who much prefers to stay at range and drop powerful spells on her foes. If she finds herself surrounded by enemies, she would rather use an ability to escape than to take them on directly. The Druid is drops also a enabled? spellcaster, but unlike the Sorceress, he uses his spells as a means to support his melee abilities. Okay. And by melee abilities, we mean he can turn into a giant animal and rip his enemies to pieces. Well. Should be. Yeah. If, if I can have them, then they should be on. Each of these yep. classes feels extremely different to play, but we want to go even further. It's time to check out the Mercenary. Hey! Awesome! There's Perfect! No out there, I My class! Touch. So long as the pay is good and a crossbow can solve it. Oh, yes. So much yes. This is my class. I'll take them all down, one bolt at a time. When thinking about each new class, we really try to think about how we can make combat feel different from all the others. For the mercenary, that difference is the crossbow. A crossbow is fundamentally different than a regular bow because it fires instantly instead of needing to be drawn back. This means that you need immediate feedback. Clicking the fire button should make the character shoot instantly, yes. just like in a shooter. It should. As soon as we experience that, we realize that there are a lot of design lessons to learn from shooters, and so we fully embraced them. In Path of Exile 2, we have crossbows that work like sniper rifles, shotguns, and assault rifles. But in order to really get shooter-like gameplay, we wanted to go further. In Path of Exile 2, we now support WASD movement. You can now walk around in any direction independent of aiming. In fact, if this is your preferred method of gameplay, you can use it on any class, regardless of what weapon type you're using. You can change between Excellent. Click the move it's twin or WASD stick. at any time. Oh, that is huge. You can only hold two crossbows at a time, but Path of Exile 2 is all about interesting combinations of abilities, and this is where ammo skills come in. This is a burst shot crossbow, and right now I have armor piercing ammo equipped, which makes it very effective when facing a group of enemies, since it pierces right through them. Bloody horrors! But there are other ammos too. For a bigger single target, it might be a good idea to switch to incendiary. The more projectiles hit the target, the stronger the ignite. So you'll want to get up nice, close and personal with this one. If you have a bunch of targets running at you, you might want to slow them down. In this case, you could switch to permafrost burst shot. Shooting a bunch of smaller enemies at range will chill them and potentially even freeze them in place. Oh, this is my class. Once you have some frozen enemies though, you can switch back to armor piercing. Shooting a frozen enemy with armor piercing burst shot will explode the ice, doing a huge amount of damage to all nearby enemies. I love it. Another feature crossbows have is attachments. This is a grenade launcher. As you can see, when I equip it, it appears on the underside of the crossbow. These attachments are just like skill gems, so you effectively get extra skill slots. And you can augment these with support gems, just like regular skills. Yes! These grenades take a while to explode, so it's a good idea to pair them with some kind of crowd control, like permafrost burst shot. 
Oh my god, this looks so good. We have other grenades too though. This attachment is a flash grenade. It does barely any damage, but it does a huge amount of stun. It can be a great opener before you run into combat. Now, here's another attachment, an oil grenade. Firing one of these grenades coats the ground and nearby enemies in oil. Oil slows enemies down, so it's another useful crowd control mechanic. Oh, set him on fire, bro! What are you doing?! Where's your head at?! Now, another thing that oil oh. can do is be set on fire. Any burning enemy or explosion will ignite the oil, causing extra burning damage. There we go. One of the problems with burst shot crossbows is that each pallet doesn't do much damage individually. This means that if enemies have armor, then it will be very effective preventing that damage. But thankfully, you can equip an additional crossbow in your second weapon set to deal with the weaknesses of your primary weapon. This is a rapid shot crossbow. Rapid shot is great for closing on enemies because you can shoot while running. In Path of Exile 2, we now have the ability to allow you to use some skills while moving. Being able to create skills like this opens up a lot of new design space and allows us to really increase the This guy's not of rolling at all. You guys, do you guys notice that? He's not doing any kind of dodging, which is a little weird because it's supposed to be like a big new mechanic. The armor piercing version of Rapid Shot slowly erodes a monster's armor. Once the armor is fully broken, you can easily switch back to Burst Shot to deal much more damage. That's cool. That's real cool. Being able to run while shooting with Rapid Shot is also great for when you want to perform a fighting retreat. Reload. Using permafrost ammo with rapid shot is also useful if you need to retreat. When you shoot the ground, it creates ice crystals. If you draw monsters back over these crystals, they explode, chilling okay. the monsters. That's it's awesome. It's great if you want to set up a safe zone before pulling the next pack. Slowing enemies down can come in handy if you want to use the incendiary version of rapid shot. Using this skill requires that you charge up a little bit before it fires. But as it continues to heat up, it will do more and more damage. It has a really large clip size, so you can just keep firing and firing with it. But the other really useful feature is that when the crossbow is heated up, it adds extra fire damage to any grenade that you launch. Man, the, the length of time those grenades take is a little long. Now I've been using explosive grenades here, but it will work equally as well with flash or oil grenades too. If you use it with oil grenades, the oil will catch Go fire. Go looks charmed, dude. This looks this looks awesome. This looks fantastic. I am so sold with this. This is my starting class. This reminds me very much of the Ascent, which I love. Another crossbow type that you can find is Power Shot. This one works just like a classic sniper rifle. Use it with armor-piercing ammo and it will penetrate armor on targets. So it's a good idea to use when something's really tough. Back down or die. Now this skill has another interesting interaction with armor break. If an enemy has its armor broken, then your power shot hits a weak spot and does a huge amount of single target damage, with a bunch of extra stun for good measure. Cool. Now, the incendiary version of power shot is more like a rocket launcher. It does a big explosive blast at a distance.
One of the really useful features of this version is that you can explode any grenades that happen to be on the ground. Oh! Huh. Okay. This combo also works really well with incendiary rapid shot. I'm gonna charge up the heat on my crossbow, shoot out a bunch of grenades, and then start the fireworks with a power shot. Okay. The ice version of power shot creates frost walls at a distance. This is great for crowd controlling monsters and tight passages. The wall segments have other uses too. If they get destroyed by monsters, then they will explode, doing a small amount of damage. Now, remember that burst shot combo with frozen enemies we did earlier? That works with ice walls too. Let's put burst shot back on. Now I can fill up this area with ice walls, then shoot them with armor piercing burst shot for a huge amount of damage. The walls look like they're taunting. Which is interesting. All right, it's time to face the boss for this area. Let's see how we fare against her with all the skills I've shown you so far. Why is he not dodge rolling, dude? This is actually bothering me. Like, what is going on? Ew. Oh, wow. Dude, that grenade combo does incredible damage. There we go. Thank you. One roll. We got one. Oh, look, he remembered he can roll now. Oh, that's cool, man. That's real cool. Oh, dude, that combo is fantastic. What is going on in this God's forsaken city? And that looked great. That fight looked awesome. It feels totally different than anything we've made before and shows you the range of what's possible yeah. in Path of Exile 2. That actually looked great. We're going to be showing off a lot more about Path of Exile 2 as we approach its beta, but in the meantime, we've got a Path of Exile 1 expansion coming out next week. I'm going to hand over to Mark, also known as Neon, to show you what's in store for Peer We One. Thanks, Jonathan. Okay. Well, let's just go ahead and get straight on into it. Here's the trailer for Path of Exile Affliction. Something moves in the mists. Something sinister. Thor. Rot. Plague. And claw. The affliction spreads. It hungers for more.
Tread lightly in the wildwood, which shifts and fights. Accept our help, the ancient power of the Asmiri. Beware the spirits that yearn for freedom. And the heart of evil that waits in the dark. I'm very excited for PoE 2 just because I feel like it's going to be a much simpler, more basic version of PoE, and I am totally okay with that. Because, like, there's so many mechanics and systems and stuff like that in this game. It's just kind of like these the expansions the are just, league, they're overwhelming. They're overwhelming. Which the key word is overwhelming. Passageways that lead to the Viridian Wildwood. A vile affliction has covered this forest with a foreboding darkness. You'll need to uncover the forest mysteries. I'm really not sure it'll be that much simpler. Yeah, Co, you're just As you dumb. approach the darkness, the wisps yeah. burn away its affliction. I mean, both Make sure of those you are true carefully, statements. Because they only have a limited amount of power. But be warned, the darkness is full of cursed monsters that emerge to kill you. As you explore, you might see other types of wisps trapped inside the darkness. The Wildwood is trying to guide you towards clues about its affliction. Follow the trails of wisps by collecting them, and you may uncover many different secrets. New characters to find, shrines, boss battles, and all kinds of new encounters are lurking in the forest just waiting for you to discover them. There are many rewards to earn for those brave enough to seek them. When the sacred wisps run out of energy, they will return you back to where you came from. Any other types of wisps you have collected will return with you to Rayclast. These wisps, having been saved from the affliction, disperse into the environment and inhabit randomly chosen monsters in the area, increasing their power and also their rewards. The different types of wisps have different effects on monsters, and sometimes more than one type will inhabit a single monster, making the fight even harder and even more rewarding. If this happens to a boss, you could be in for a tough fight, but if you can overcome it, your efforts will not be in vain. Primal Wisps grant an item rarity bonus to inhabited monsters. Wild Wisps grant an item quantity bonus, and Vivid Wisps cause them to drop currency items. If a monster gets all three types, they'll drop more items of a higher rarity and a lot of currency. While exploring the Wildwood, you might find some of the last few Asmeri Wanderers who have managed to survive in the forest since it was cursed. Each of them have different survival specializations and they are willing to teach you if you agree to help them defeat the source of the affliction, the King in the Mists. Choose which of the Asmeri that you will complete quests for to unlock one of three new Ascendancy classes, which you can have in addition to your regular Ascendancy class. Up to eight points for these classes are unlocked as you complete more quests for the Asmeri you are training under. The Warden of Eves can teach you to become a Warden of the Magi, a powerful class that takes advantage of wilderness knowledge. A Warden of the Magi can learn to use tinctures which coat their weapon, granting various powerful effects. You can equip tinctures in your flask slots and toggle them on and off at will. You can only have one enabled at a time, Whoa. but the effects are quite conditional, so you may want to have more than one equipped and swap between them during combat. For example, equip the Ironwood Tincture to gain the benefit of always stunning enemies on full life. Tinctures can also get random mods. This one in particular adds stacks of wither to targets on full life and steals frenzy charges on hit, which makes it great as an initiator. When you are fighting rare monsters or finishing off tough bosses, you will want to swap to the Oak Branch Tincture, which grants Culling Strike, increased damage against enemies on low life, and has a chance to steal a mod from rare enemies you kill. Mm. You can buy more tinctures from the Warden of Eves using Primal Wisps when you find her in the forest, so keep an eye out for her. As a Warden of the Magi gains more Ascendancy points, they gain access to more skills that let them further specialize in tinctures. For example, 
Nature's concoction allows you to invest in having your tinctures enhance your flasks. This ascendancy skill makes it important to think about which slots your tinctures are placed in and what flasks they are adjacent to. You will have better uptime on those flasks and they'll be stronger as a result. But there are plenty more skills to choose even if you don't want to engage with tinctures. For example, another new ability to unlock is Bark Skin. It's a reservation skill that causes bark to grow all over your body, increasing armor. As you take damage, the bark falls off, increasing your evasion. Over time, the bark will grow back, removing the evasion bonus but increasing your armor again. The Breaker of Oaths can teach Damn. you to become a Warlock of the Mists, an ascendancy class specializing in the darker arts of the Izmeri. One powerful ability you can choose is Blood Hunt, which grants an active skill called Ravenous. This skill lets you see what type a monster is under its life bar, whether it is a demon, beast, undead, construct, or humanoid. Consuming a corpse with the skill gives a buff to damage against that type of monster and reduces damage taken by it. You can only have one type active at a time, so it's a good idea to choose wisely for the area that you are in. Some bosses like the Maven are eldritch in nature and don't conform to the regular corpses that you have access to, but don't worry. The Breaker of Oaths has a shop where you can trade wild wisps for corpses that you can place on the ground wherever you are. Ew! Buy an eldritch corpse and you will be able to get the bonus while fighting eldritch entities like the Maven. You may notice that most of the corpses he sells are not monsters you normally encounter. You might want to try turning some of these corpses into spectres, to take advantage of some of the unique abilities that these monsters have. Jeez. The Warlock of the Mists gets access to many other abilities. For example, there is a trio of curses that you can pick from. One of these curses targets your minions, giving them life degen and making them explode for massive damage when they are near death. One of them prevents enemies from dealing damage for the latter portion of its duration, which is quite powerful against bosses. This curse creates the interesting build decision of whether or not you should increase curse duration or reduce it. The final curse is a mark that causes enemy phantasms to be spawned when you hit the marked enemy. These phantasms aren't on your side, so they work well with on-hit and on-kill trigger effects, for example. Huh. The Primal Huntress can teach you to become a Wildwood Primalist. Unlike the other new ascendancies, the Primal Huntress lets you customize your tree. Stag Turtle with the 69 months. Nice. Thank you, Stag. Appreciate you, You do buddy. this with charms that you can buy from the Primal Huntress for Vivid Wisps. Charms have randomly generated mods, which give stats from regular ascendancy classes, allowing you to create your own hybrid ascendancy class. Charms are magic items that are aligned with different attributes. So for example, this Ursine charm is strength aligned and has gotten the melee hits have a chance to fortify stat from the champion and the ability to stop your movement speed going below it's base from It's an RNG the class mechanic, this basically. This Interline Corvine charm lets you get the stat that makes your consecrated ground effects linger from the Inquisitor and the effect that makes cursed enemies explode from the Occultist. Some of the combination of mods that you might find for sale on charms can be extremely powerful. So keep a lookout for the Primal Huntress's shop, even if you are not playing. That as a is insane. As a Primalist, you also get access to a few other interesting abilities. Use Warcries next to corpses, and they have a chance to drop an extra item. It opens nearby chests too. The Primalist also gets access to a small extra backpack, just in case you find yourself needing to cart more items to town during your map runs. What? If you are unhappy with the class you picked, or you just happen to find a really great item for another one of the classes, you are able to change which class you are using next time you find one of the Asmeri Wanderers. Just remember that you will have to do their quests in order to gain the ascendancy points for that class. These quests will lead you towards the ultimate goal of the Asmeri, finding the King in the Mists, defeating him, and cleansing the forest of its affliction once and for all. Oh my God. There are new uniques to find, rewards to claim, and new ascendancy classes to master in the Affliction League. 
Now that we've covered what's wow. in the league, wow. let's talk about some of the changes you can Forty, expect I gotta to go. the core game in 3.23. Chat, this is it. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Path of Exile. I need to run for now because I gotta go get my kids. Um, thank you so much for being here. This new league seems kind of wild. Unfortunately, like I've said uh, a few times in the past, and I'll reiterate now, this league comes out the day after Rogue Trader, and I'm probably still going to be leveling my WoW guys, so I'm I'm not sure how much time we're going to have for this league. Um, but I'm totally sold on the PoE2 stuff, which we'll be diving into incredibly hard. And uh, yeah, we'll kind of we'll kind of go from there. Hopefully, I'll have some time. I kind of I really want to do like a big RF build at some point, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. Have a great one. See you tonight.